On his first trip to Paris, Andy McDermott is looking for a little danger. Andy, what are you doing? I'll show you guys a stunt you'll never top. But tonight... Andy, this is madness. You're gonna get yourself killed. There's nothing more dangerous than falling for the wrong girl. No, don't! Talk about the woman of my dreams. She's obviously whack. Kind of girl jumps off the Eiffel Tower has issues, man. Major issues. You mustn't get involved. It's much too dangerous, believe me. You must go before it's too late. I was attacked by this big, wild dog. You were bitten. You're already changing. It was not the dog. It was a werewolf. <laughs> Now you have become one too. <laughs> Seraphine is um, <laughs> she lives in Paris been raised in Paris and she's very strange I play Andy and I'm an American and I'm running around Europe with my friends gallivanting and we meet up there in the Eiffel Tower in the Eiffel Tower pretty huh? not bad for a model you it is out. a love story it you is. see, I fall in love with Seraphine, despite her problems. Yeah, I have a big problem. You can probably figure it out if you read the title. <laughs> she bites me, and I turn into a werewolf. Yep. Come check it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's really good. That's the commercial for the movie right there. <laughs> To turn into a werewolf, you have to burn from the inside. So I'm going to try to do that, whatever that means. When I read the script for the first time, what I liked about it was thinking, how, how is all this going to be done? Because it seemed like there was a lot of stuff, you know? Um, I liked that it had a lot of comedy mixed in with what's, you know, what I, I read as really good suspense. And then I saw me witness, and I saw what Anthony was capable of, and then I knew it was gonna be good. So uh, that's really what interested me in the whole story. Andy starts out a really nice guy, you know, and then he gets bit by the werewolf, and he starts to transform, and the first things that happen to him is he changes from this nice guy to an animal. And so it's sort of about the basic elements of people, you know. So that, that's something that happens to Andy. And as an actor, that was fun because you got to play this, like, normal guy, and then you got, I got to explore, like, uh, some uh, animal qualities. Um, one of the most exciting things of this movie was shooting on the Eiffel Tower because, you, you know, the Eiffel Tower is something you always see in postcards, on TV, it's just an image. It's a symbol of something. And then when you're on it, you know, you, you go through that, like, wow, I'm, I'm on the Eiffel Tower. And then we were on it at night. They closed it. They kept the lights on. We're looking out over Paris. We were on the um, stairways and ladders that aren't open to the public. And it was like, wow, you know. And uh, Vince and, and Phil Buckman and I were just like, you know, not too shabby. It's pretty nice. I really wanted to get into film. So I've been motivated towards this. And I've been really lucky. So for the last four years, I've been doing theater, TV, and now film. And um, I really want to keep making films. Uh, my first film is a movie called That Thing You Do. And uh, Tom Hanks wrote it and directed it. 
and it was um, uh, my big break. I'm glad I got to do that thing you do and, uh, and then move on to this because they're so contrasting. This film really gave me a, a lot of great experiences. I got to work with uh, very different people than I ever met before. Anthony comes across to me as a director who really knows what he wants, which I admire greatly. Through the course of making this film, I realized that if you're with a director, and I've been with directors who don't really know what they want, and it's hell, and it sucks, and it's the most frustrating thing for a cast and crew. Um, as far as, as Anthony goes, knowing what he wants, and that being a really good quality, it, it just it, it makes it easier for you to do your job. He and I got along really well and communicate really well, so I always felt good about the relationship we had. And uh, if I can trust him and he can trust me, which has been the way it, it's been working, you know, I think it's successful. So, you know, I think that's the way it'll come off. Hi, I'm Tom Everett Scott, <laughs> and this has been the grittiest, sweatiest, slimiest, bloodiest, stickiest, dirtiest, sweatiest, grittiest, bloodiest, greasiest, most exciting film I ever worked on. Well, I think it was a fun script, and also in the same time, my character is kind of dark. It was the darkest element of the film. Not the darkest, they're darker than me, <laughs> some other guys. But, um, uh, you know, like a serious kind of character, but at the same time, she's got to do a lot of things and running around and all that stuff. And, and she's also a pretty deep character, and she's a, she's a good werewolf. That's kind of original. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's actually a really weird experience for me because that's something coming from European uh, films and everything. It's something I don't do very much. And it was kind of a challenge for me. And, uh, you know, I did as much as I could insurance-wise, you know, uh, all the stunts I could do, I, I tried to do them. I'm scared of everything. <laughs> I'm scared of jumping, running, anything physical, so I had to do all that. And this is nothing I've ever done before. A werewolf or something like coming from a, some, uh, you know, mytholo like, you know, like imagination type of thing. I've never done that before. I mean, even though she's a werewolf, she's, you know, she wished she wasn't, you know, she's born werewolf, so it's not by choice. For him, it's by choice, and it's by, you know, you know, he's enjoying it so much. Andy's a sweet guy. I mean, he's like, a, you know, he's like a, you know, she finds in him something, uh, like, pretty naive, and in the same time that maybe he could help, because he's very, like, very much like that. The character is like, you know, this young guy that wants to help, and, you know, he's always kind of like, you know, not knowing what's happening, and, you know, it's kind of sweet. You know? Well, there's the lycanthropic cycle. <laughs> That's when the moon is rising. And uh, actually, I think it's uh, like a, you know, like, like this, a human biorhythm. <laughs> well, human biorhythm is kind of more or less normal all the time, but I guess werewolf biorhythm is more up and down. I guess it's like manic depressive. You know, when she gets closer to the full moon, she's more antsy and more nervous. And, uh, because she knows what's She coming. knows what's coming, and also her body is reacting to that, I guess. You know, it's a whole, like, chemical thing, you know? I mean, that's the whole idea of uh, the cure is about, you know, controlling those chemicals. She's not obviously strong. She doesn't look physically strong. She's not obviously strong at all. She looks kind of vulnerable, actually. That's why it makes her even uh, more interesting, I think, in the fact... If you had some kind of like super tough looking girl doing all this, I wouldn't be interested. You know what I'm saying? It's like suddenly you have someone that could be vulnerable, but in fact, you never know. People that look vulnerable can be really, really strong when they need to. It has nothing to do with like, you know, some kind of physical feature or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, the character is more on the serious side, like in Mute Witness, but uh, it's, yeah, she's not, she's not um, only a victim. I mean, she, she's also dangerous because she could be, you know, killing people also when she gets, when she becomes a werewolf. <laughs> well, even though my character is kind of sweet, you know, when she's not a werewolf, she's not aggressive or mean, you know, because she's actually, she doesn't want to be that way. She doesn't want to be a werewolf. So she's, you know, 
she has to run, she has to fight, she has to do this and that, but she's not a, you know, an evil character or anything like that. So, um, so it's actually pretty in sync with my look, even though, you know, she has a double personality. This is Tom Everett Scott playing the part of Andy. He's sort of an exaggerated Eric Estrada on a good day. He's <laughs> good with the ladies, sweet, sincere, delicious. That's Vince Tom. Veloff over there. He's uh, exactly the opposite. He's, he's, he's uh, Officer John Baker. That's the way he is. He, he's, he's the cynic of the group. This is Phil Buckman. He plays Chris. And he's the hero. <laughs> Thank you! He saves us all from a fiery death. That's my job. He loves the girls, and he loves his music. He's never bungee jumped before. This will be his first time. Yeah. That's why and we're in two here. two weeks, we're actually going to be in Munich, where he tries it for the first time. Really going to tell. Yep. I'm not nervous or anything. <laughs> At the moment, we're in between the second and the third platform. This is actually an area which is forbidden to the public. And we're shooting a sequence where uh, the boys have climbed up. They're climbing up this ladder structure, which goes from here right up to the top. No, it's great that we've got the... Uh, permission to shoot on all these interesting corners on the Eiffel Tower and it adds to the drama, the build up to the actual jump. I wanted the key sequence of the film to take place in the Eiffel Tower, like it's the symbol of Paris, it's the, uh, uh, it's the meeting point of our two main characters and it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a trademark and it sells Paris and it, uh, it uh, kicks off the movie. It's a romance, drama, action, suspense, comedy, and uh, involves a group of three Americans on a daredevil tour of Europe, each one trying to outdo the other in um, performing a stunt in every major city in Europe. And we pick up the story when they're on the way to Paris, and one of our main characters uh, decides to do a bungee jump off the top of the Eiffel Tower at midnight. And under these extraordinary circumstances, it is close to full moon. They meet a beautiful girl who at the same time uh, intends to throw herself off, off the top of the tower to commit suicide. Now, we find out later who this girl is. She turns out to be the daughter of the Jenny Agatha character in the, in the 1981 American Wolf in London version, who we find out must have been pregnant at the time before the David Norton character was killed at the end. Andy accidentally, on purpose, saves her life, rescues her by catching her in midair whilst falling from the tower. Our unsuspecting Americans are drawn into the underground nightclub from which Seraphine, our female hero, rescues our male hero and in the process, he is bitten uh, and uh, turns himself into a werewolf. And it is the dilemma of uh, him having to kill the person he loves in order to become human again. Because once you're a werewolf, you can become human again if you eat the heart of the werewolf that bit you. There's humor, there's tension, uh, there's uh, a romance, there's drama, adventure, action, and all those elements rolled into one. I like taking the audience on a journey through different uh, moods. And it's something I think I personally, when I leave a cinema, feel most satisfied the more uh, different realms of my um, emotional experience I've been taking through. The werewolf was, will be brought to life through a combination of animatronics and state-of-the-art computer-generated images, um, both on different sides of the Atlantic. Uh, the CGI work will be done by a Californian-based company called Santa Barbara Studios, who have managed to recruit top members of the industry, uh, some from Jurassic Park, uh, others from Star Wars um, experience. And um, from London, we have an animatronics team from uh, Crawley Creatures 
who have joined forces with Magicon in Munich and uh, also creating extraordinary prosthetics and animatronics work. What makes this film so visually rich is the variation in locations. I mean, we go from the top of the Eiffel Tower through modern Paris down into Gothic church like we're sitting in at the moment, down into the underground chamber underneath the church, which leads to catacombs, to underground waterways, which are the arteries underneath Paris, and up into villa locations. It's, it's, uh, it's very much like a, like a modern video game, I'd say. The budget is around $23 million, which is 10 times the budget of my last feature film, Mute Witness. So behind me you have the, um, what's it called? What's this building called? Eiffel Tower. Uh, Eiffel Tower. Thank you. And this is one of the main characters in the movie. People here in Paris were very kind to let us shoot here and keep the lights on all night. Um, I bet everybody in Paris is wondering why the lights are still on. So, on the count of three, one, two, three, off. Oh. Thank you very much. I've been really working a lot on, on this character because I think when you were a werewolf, a wolf, in real life, you don't act anymore as you used to act before. I mean, you've got a different way of uh, feeling, smelling, look, watching the things. I mean, you have a different perception of life. And uh, artistically, w this is what uh, is more interesting for me, to create this kind of personage, which, which is completely different of all the characters I uh, used to play before. It's a very big challenge when uh, when I, when I read the script the first time, I really saw in the personage of, in the character of Claude, a, a possibility to, uh, for the first time in my life, really create completely uh, a character with a different way of moving, of walking, of, of speaking, different voice. And uh, well, I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, when I spoke with uh, Anthony Weller, at the beginning I said, uh, what we should not do is to uh, to create the character of a, a skinhead stupid and uh, only mean and uh, uh, I think it's he has a heart he had some he has some dreams he believes in his cause um, and he's somebody uh, very very powerful he he never yell I mean he's very intense inside he gets a power he can be uh, nice, sympathetic to the people, because he gets the power. But what I wanted to do with this character is to make feel the people that at any moment he can explode, but he never does. That makes his power. He's quiet, he speaks slowly, watch, wait, like a werewolf, like a wolf. Well, American Werewolf in Paris uh, is an extremely challenging project. Uh, Synthesizing creatures with computers is not easy work. And uh, we wanted to do that at Santa Barbara Studios, so it was the perfect project for us to uh, become one of just a few companies in the world that can do this kind of work. So we were very excited about taking on the work. We tripled the size of Santa Barbara Studios for this project. We had 180 shots to do, and um, well, we started about a year ago but uh, the actual work took place over the last six months. So it was a lot of shots to do in a very short amount of time. So we needed very skilled, experienced people to do the work and to get it all completed. Uh, the werewolves in this picture required us to develop new software as we had to create hair on the werewolf, which is very difficult for computers to do. We all saw the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, and they were really fantastic. And they were very difficult to do at that time. Uh, now, in this film, we are doing something just as complicated, but with the additional element of hair, which is very difficult to do. Uh, so this is Jurassic Park with hair. Well, we have uh, numerous werewolf shots in this movie. Uh, some, sh some of the shots have several werewolves fighting. Uh, we have werewolves jumping out of fountains. We have uh, werewolves knocking through doors. We have werewolves attacking people running, jumping, leaping. 
Um, they're all difficult, but uh, a few of them are very challenging. The werewolf coming out of the fountain is probably about our hardest shot because we have to have dripping water coming off the werewolf. Um, it's, it's extremely difficult. Seraphine, the female lead in the film, played by Julie Delpy, she transforms from Julie Delpy into a werewolf. And um, it's a very difficult shot. Uh, she uh, has to metamorphosize. Uh, her face changes, her teeth grows, her eyes change. Uh, she rips off her shirt, revealing a werewolf uh, in semi-transformed um, shape. And we travel down her body. And at the very end, we have actually computer-generated legs that are werewolf legs. The kneecap breaks backwards. The extra bone grows. It's the hair grows. It's a very scary shot. Well, this has been a great experience for Santa Barbara Studios. Uh, this project there is uh, fairly unique uh, in the business. There's a lot of computer graphics done in feature film work but not a lot of character animation work that has to look perfectly real and believable and interact with actors. So we were uh, fortunate to be able to work on this project and fortunate to be able to build a team of people here at Santa Barbara Studios who can do this kind of work now and in the future. And we're looking forward to doing uh, a lot more of this character animation. work. From nothing, you're creating some life on the screen and it's kind of exciting to come up with your ideas and, and, and have them you know, realized in front of you. Oh my gosh, that's real. Well, it looks real because there's something that the, the artist put into it, like from himself, that is from, from, you know, from life, from their life experiences. And, um, and I, you know, I love that, you know, even with all this technology now, it, uh, all the work we do, it's still touched by, you know, the, the hands of man and it, uh, and it has that life quality, really, because, um, cause, you know, there's, there's nothing really so automatic about it. You're, you're going in and putting your heart and, and soul into the performance. What I'd like to see is it's you creating things that couldn't, couldn't possibly exist.